साहिब जी आई एम ए सीनियर सिटीजन एंड सीन लाइफ विथ माइक्रोस्कोपिक आइज विच आई हैव सीन इन मेनी रेसेज ऑफ पीपल एंड एसोसिएटेड विथ मेनी कल्चर्स एंड मेनी ए डिफरेंट रिलीजन्स इन इंडिया एंड अब्रॉड द जोरास्ट्रियन रिलीजन इज द फर्स्ट मोनोथिस्ट रिलीजन विच एग्जिस्टेड फ्राम थाउजेंड ऑफ ईयर्स बिफोर जीजस क्राइस्ट मोनोथिज्म विच वॉज लेटर फॉलोड बाई द जूज क्रिस्टियंस एंड मुस्लिम्स इन दिस डॉक्यूमेंट्री आई हैव शोन देयर हिस्ट्री geography and their total religion and lifestyle they are the most wonderful race the world has ever known they live by the gods order of manasni gavasni and kunasni that is good thoughts good words and good deeds observing that by which they live and by which they die they are totally sincere honest they don't cheat they don't lie they are not corrupt and every possible goodness is in that race they are very intelligent hard working no profession is left untouched by them they excel in whatever they do about 1300 years ago they were the rulers of the world with the greatest emperors to have ever ruled after their defeat and persecution they came to india and settled in the 8th century ad in gujarat now this is an endangered race fast diminishing as they don't convert anybody to their religion a parsi has to be born a parsi earlier they were in millions in persia now they are reduced to 70000 in india and about 20000 all over the world the government of india is helping them in all possible way to increase their population that is birth rate i say that ahura mazda their god has created them given them the world to dominate and hence ahura mazda will take care of the diminishing race of the parsis saib ji my name is aspidebara i am the honorary secretary of the parsi zoroastrian anjuman of sikandarabad and hyderabad i have been in this post for the last one and a half years and i am also a member of the managing committee for the last 14 years The Parsi community has been facing a gradual decline in its population, and to this effect, the Ministry of Minorities at the centre has started a program known as Geo Parsi. Parsi community में पैदा हुए मेरे को बहुत बहुत ही प्राउडनेस है. Mainly, our religion is based on three basic principles. good thoughts good words and good deeds yes i am very proud to be a zoroastrian um because i'll give you a very small incident right that once happened once we just wanted to buy a simple thing like a milk cooker so we wanted to buy four and we got into a shop selected the four cookers and then we had to go somewhere else so we asked the shopkeeper that we'll pay the money you please keep the cookers till we return and the reply the shopkeeper said no need to pay money madam you are a parsi and i'm sure your word you will keep so you will definitely come back so when you return you can give back the money i was really proud to see that parsis still in this world of corruption has that name and that to coming from a person of another community hi i'm nazneen uh, you're here with me and here's my dad noshif This is my mom, Preeni. <laughs> like I topped in my uh, in the minority group from the government of AP, and uh, here is my medal. I am Nasir and Misri. I was born in Gujarat, Nawsari. I was brought up in Sikandarabad. I did my schooling in Parsi school. I am proud to be Zorashen because we are honest and sincere in our thing. My name is uh, Armin Wadia. I was born Armin Kasad. Uh, I was born in Bombay, but uh, my parents are from a small town in Gujarat called Nawsari. That is the place where Jamshed Ji Tata was also born. I am very proud to be a Zoroastrian because we command a certain respect in society. My name is Shazneen Wadia. I was uh, born and brought up in Hyderabad. My parents are Kaki and Armin Wadia. I am very proud to be a Zoroastrian 
the basic tenets of the religion are such that you can't help but do good in society another thing i like very much about zoroastrianism is the fact that it teaches you religious tolerance it's one of the oldest religions in the world but you will never find a parsi only do following his religion and not accepting other religions or festivals you will find parsi celebrating eid you will find parsi celebrating diwali with equal gusto and enthusiasm as they would navroz i am nargish dadi kalyani wala i am originally from bombay after marriage i came down to hyderabad i've been a teacher for nearly 40 years i'm proud to be a zoroastrian because zoroastrianism teaches us three great things good thoughts are always in our mind we do not speak ill of anyone we do not speak bad words or we do not speak anything bad against anyone and good deeds is instilled in us forever kerfegar atia i was born in hyderabad in the year 1946 my father was a priest in the lahore agiari and my mother belonged to hyderabad i am a full fledged priest of the parsi community and offer my honorary services to the hyderabad agiari since the last more than 30 years there is a opinion amongst others that the zoroastrian community is diminishing but notwithstanding the diminishing factor we have got a confidence that the community will never perish and i would never never agree to intermingle marriages and thus divert or dilute the purity of the parsi community which is so popular i am farida ratia i was born in hyderabad and bred and educated in bombay i was born in a priestly family and got married in a priestly family our community is diminishing because i feel that the religious foundation is not laid properly in our children nowadays religious practices should be inculcated in children from very childhood this is not being done and therefore children are not knowledgeable about their religion and don't feel don't think twice before marrying outside the community my name is shanawaz barya i was born and brought up and educated in the same city that we are here just now in hyderabad in andhra pradesh my parents are from nausari that is a town in the state gujarat of course those days that uh, the naujat was to be performed uh, in the native place so my grandparents are also from nausari in the year 2002 and 2004 i was suggested as the best principal of the minority institutions my name is zubin kaparia i study in class 9b i study in brc parsi high school hi i am kaizar i study in brc parsi high school hi i am parwan sri kaizar and my age is 13 years i am studying in vijay jyoti pasi high school hi i am parsi kehrani i am 13 years old i am studying in vijay jyoti pasi high school hi my name is firoz jimi kavaria i am i am 16 years old i am studying studying in class 10c i am studying vijay jyoti pasi school hi my name is nevin amsai i am 15 years old i am studying in vijay jyoti pasi high school in 10c good morning i am kainas i am from studying in class 8 I am 13 years old. I am in BRJC Pasi High School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sari. I am 13 years old and studying in class 9. My school name is BRJC Pasi High School. Thank you. Hi, my name is Havogi Jayjilla. My age is 12 years. My I am studying in class 7A. My school is BRJC Pasi High School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shiraz Jayjilla. I am 12 years old. I am studying in class 6th. My school name is BRJC Parsi High School. Hi, my name is Falshi. I am 7 years old. My name is Nara Ramya Richapuria. I was born in Lahore <clears throat> in the year 1921. When I was one and a half, half year old, 
my grandparents who were staying in Sikandarawa brought me to Sikandarawa because they had adopted me. I was born in Sikandarabad. I'm proud to be a Russian. Hello, I'm Sajji. I'm Koshit Mehta from Sikandarabad. I was born in Sikandarabad. I was brought up in Sikandarabad. And I think I'll die in Sikandarabad. I love my Sikandarabad. Uh, I'm Parok Dadi Banaji. I was uh, born in 1926. My father was in the Nizam's judicial service. Well, I am really proud to be a Zoroastrian. I think it's one of the best religions that has come up and is, if you read, you'll find that there is nothing to compare, I feel, with our religion. This is Arni Banaji, my Naujot, that also took place in Devlali. Fortunately or unfortunately, because my voice is not the voice of the masses, but uh, most of the Orthodox don't want to take girls from other communities into our religion, into our community. And that is exactly the reason why it is dwindling. You see, people don't want a change, whether it is ten years later or hundred years later. They want to stick to what has gone by hundred years back. Krishnotra Aura Mazda, Saibji to all of you. I am Rointon B. Vakil, son of late Barjorji Nauroji Vakil. I was the eighth member of the family. Krishnotra Aura Mazda, Saibji. I am Maruk Rointon Vakil. I was born in Navsari and brought up in Bombay. I am proud to be a Zoroastrian because it is a unique religion. My name is Naval B. Vakil. Hi, I am Zubin Vakil, son of Roynton and Maruk Vakil. I was born in 1978 in Mumbai. My ambition is to do anything and everything related to fashion and clothing and making human beings look good. I like to give a message to all that be religious minded and be staunch in your own religion and don't di divert yourself to other religions. I am Mrs. Sandhu Pochkanawala and I have been asked to interview. So today I am saying that I was born and bred in Hong Kong for the last many years. After the Second World War, my parents came to India, to Bombay. In Hong Kong we have a place. He does all the naujots and weddings there. I'm very proud to be a Zoroastrian because I firmly believe that the Zoroastrian religion has a lot of uh, impact on the on the children. My name is Rohinton K. Pochkhanawala. I was born in Bombay. Kaki Paramje Vikaji, born at Bombay. I am proud to be a Zoroastrian. My name is Gulnar C. Vikaji. I am from Hyderabad. My native place is Hyderabad. My name is Kushnum Vikaji. I studied in Parsi High School. Proud to be a Zoroastrian. My ambition is to become an hairostress. Kushnum Tara Haure Mazda. My name is Meenu Nari Vasegara. Among the millions and millions of population all around the world, you find very, very few Parsis and they are one among the millions. I am very, very proud to be a Parsi and the Parsis all around the world or wherever they are, they are truthful, sincere, honest and integrity-wise they are the first chance to stand in. I am really, very proud to be a Parsi. My name is Arnavaz Vasaigara. This is my husband whom you have already met, Meenu Vasaigara. I was born and brought up in Bombay. My date of birth is uh, 1st August 1921. My name is Dr. Keki Firoz Pestenji. I am from Hyderabad, born, bred, educated, everything in Hyderabad. And MD from Usmania. I am a Pakka Zoroastrian and I observe my religion, all the rituals and uh, ceremonies of my religion. And I pray three times in a day, though we are supposed to have five times prayer. But because of my old age now, I am not able to do night prayers. Uh, I did do a, Compulsorily three times prayers. Certainly I am proud to be the Zoroastrian. There is no denying that fact. And I wish that I keep my rebirth also in the same community. Hello friends, I am Jangir Mirza, residing in this colony since 1973. 
I was born in Bombay proud to be a Zoroastrian. Yes. <clears throat> because it's a very good religion. We people are very mild and cooperative. Maru naam Nargis Mirza chhe. Mumbai ma hu maru janam thayo. Maru parents bhi Mumbai na. Us Mumbai ni school ma sikhi Bengali school ma. I'm proud to be a Zoroastrian. I'm Dolly Daratna Kekheshu Daratna from Bombay. I lived in Bombay for many years. And I passed first class first in senior Cambridge. Parsi, thy name is Charity. Both DC and me are very proud to be Zoroastrians. And we hope that our three children will be brought up in the same faith. And we have done everything possible, including, of course, their nojots, to make sure that they get a good start in our religion. I think so far religion is concerned, Jamshed has said, has viewed my sentiments too. Yes, we are proud to be Zoroastrians and we are proud to be Indians. This country has given us a terrific opportunity to practice our religion, to live, to mingle with the people, to sweeten the lives of this community around us, like uh, our forefathers had told the Merji Rana when he landed at Sanjan. And I think the Parsi community has played a very important role in economically bringing up the development of this country. And we take great pride at it and we hope that we'll continue to do service to the community of, uh, around us because this country has given us a great opportunity to live peacefully and to be happy here. I'm Nasir Mehta, the uh, former Hyderabad South Zone and uh rest of India, off spinner. Uh, I'm Shiraz uh, Gimi from Nagpur. Then I joined the Navy after four years stint in the Navy. I am Mrs. Daina Rustam Hormasji from Nagpur. My parents were in Nagpur. Our community is shrinking, as is well known. And uh, I'm, I firmly believe that one of the things is marriage within the community. I feel if God has made us Zoroastrians, he must, he must have had a purpose in doing that. And I firmly believe that it is our duty to follow what God has uh, destined for us. I'm Rohinton Jalnoria. My father was from Nausari, mother from Bombay. Zoroastrianism is one of the oldest religions in this world. Hi, I'm Numi Mehta. I'm from Calcutta and I play for the Calcutta Parsi Club. Now she Chinoy. But my real name is Pauruchisti, who was the daughter of the Prophet Sathushtra, the youngest daughter and the best beloved. But I think if the Parsis had more than one child, at least two children or three children per family, then it would generate more members in the Zoroastrian community. My name is Nauza Chinoy, son of Naushe Chinoy, barrister at law. Grandson of Nawab Sarab Nawab Jung Bahadur, I come from an old illustrious Parsi family of Hyderabad, the Chinoy family, who has been in Hyderabad for 200 years or a little more than 200 years. In the beginning, there was time, only time, boundless time. Then God, in His greatness, created the word Ahuna. And when first this word was enunciated, it erupted in empty space to energize and activate the atoms to create the universe. Pleased with what he saw, God decided to create man. And so it came about that Geomad, the first man, began life on earth and soon a commune of primitive people took shape and in time prospered and multiplied. Bejdadian dynasty Geomars, according to oral traditions, carried by word of mouth from father to son, Geomars is said to be the first man to rule in this world. His place was a cave in the mountains, beasts of burden, and carnivorous animals were all under his control. He ruled for 30 years. Siamak is son of Kaomars. He died in a battle against their anti-social elements. Husang 
Ushang son of Siamak was the first to bring about separation of iron from stone and also the first to discover fire and lay the foundation for Jashan is Sada, fire festival day. He also started agriculture. He brought about peace, prosperity, plenty and happiness to his subjects in his reign. Hu Shang was founder of Bejdadian dynasty and the Iranian civilization started in his reign. He ruled for 40 years. Tamura's son of Hushang sits on the throne and discovers the art of weaving and taming of animals. Tamura's captures Devs. Devs taught Tamura's the art of writing in 30 different languages. He ruled for 30 years. Jamshid. Tamura's was succeeded by his son Jamshid. He laid the foundation of Mazda Yasna, god of worship and introduced the wearing of the kasti, the sacred thread, round the waist as a symbolic of the same. He manufactured helmet, mailed coat and metal chains. He made use of jute, silk, hair and fine metal wire to make clothing. The art of weaving and spinning and embroidery thus came into existence. He was systemized and classification of human beings according to their profession. Jamshid discovered the art of extracting from the earth noble metals like gold, silver, precious stones like rubies, jaspers. The day which Jamshid sat on the throne was called Navroz. Yima refuses to be God's prophet. Then I three times warned the fair Yima upon the material world are about to fall evil winters that will bring a cruelty, deadly frost and make snowflakes fall thick even ten inches deep in the highest top of the mountains. Therefore, make yourself an enclosure two miles long on each side of the square and bring there the seeds of sheep and oxen of dogs and birds and of red blazing fire to be an abode for men, for oxen and sheep. Make a river of water there and lead it into a mile-long channel. There you must bring the seeds of every kind of tree on this earth, the tallest and most fragrant, and the seed of every fruit. You are to bring all these seeds two of every kind. You shall bring there the seeds of men and women, of the greatest, best and finest on the earth, and the seeds of every kind of cattle. There shall be no hunchback, there or stooping man, no impotent or insane, no malicious or liar, no spiteful or jealous, no one with decayed tooth or a leper to be isolated. After a certain period, peace, prosperity and plenty pride entered Jamshid's heart. He began to think he was God Almighty himself. He turns away from God and the times turn away from him. Zahak, the Iranian chiefs, rebelled against Jamshid and went over to Zahak, the Tazi Arab, and urged him to take over the throne of Iran. With their help, Zahak marched into Iran and sat on the throne. Jamshid fled and hid himself. He was finally traced out, captured and brought to Zahak, who immediately sawed his body into two halves. During Zahak's thousand years reign, evil-minded persons thrived and none dared practice righteousness except in secret. Zahak spent all his life in destructive activities like loot, rape and arson. Paridun Paridun's father, Adbin, who traced his descent from King Temuras, was his father. Astrologers had warned Zahak that his end would come at the hands of Faridun. Whereupon, Zahak searched every nook and corner for him. He found Adbin, killed him. Faridun marched against Zahak, defeated him and sat on the throne. Zahak fled Iran but was defeated. 
he was carried into deepest cave in the Damavan mountain, tied with massive chains and abandoned there in a pitiable condition. Paridun reigned for 500 years. When he was 50 years old, he was blessed with three sons, Salm, Tur and Irach. Paridun decided to distribute this kingdom straight away among his sons so that they may reign independently over their portions. Salm expressed with his brother Tur dissatisfaction at the way Paridun had distributed his kingdom. Tur, who did not possess much native sense, was thus incited to fury against Irach. They, Salm and Tur, killed Irach. Mino Cheher, Irach's daughter, gave birth to a child, Mino Cheher. He grew up and was taught all the arts and skills of administration and warfare. Minoche leads his forces to battle with Salm and Tur and punishes them. Paridun put the crown on Minoche's head. Minoche ruled for 120 years. Navzar, Minoche left his crown and throne to Navzar. Navzar did not pay any attention to his duties and obligations as a monarch and whiled away his time in eating and sleeping. He became unjust. The Turanian chief Pashang came to know of Minocheher's death and dispatched his army against Navzar. Afra Siyab, son of Pashang, killed Navzar and sat on the throne of Iran. Zal was a son of Sam. They belonged to the great Iranian paladins. They were knights and trainers of warfare and the Pesdadian kings. Zal goes to fight Afrasiab and makes Zav as king. Zal installs Zav on the throne and marks out the boundary between Iran and Turan. Zav reigned for five years and died at the age of 86 years. Garshasp. Zav had a son named Garshasp. He sat on the throne. Pashan came to know of Zav's death. He sent a message to Afrasiab to cross Jehun and invade Iran. Just as news reached Iran of the invasion, Garshasp died and Iran was once again bereft of a monarch. Kayanian Dynasty Kaikobad was the founder of the Kayanian Dynasty. In the beginning, Kaikobad was living as a saint in a secluded place in the Mount Alburs. On the advice of Zal, Rustam went to Kaikobad and persuaded him to occupy the throne of Iran. Kaikobad sits on the throne and takes his army to fight Afrasiab. Rustam fights with Afrasiab and Afrasiab escaped from Rustam's clutches. Kaikobad ruled for about 100 years. Kaikaus Kaikaus reigned for about 150 years. His son Siaush married Firongis daughter of Turanian king Afrasiab, secretly. In some misunderstanding circumstances, Siawush got slain at the hands of Gorvi by orders of Afrasiab. Kaikhushrav, son of Siawush and Firongis, was installed on the royal throne by Kaikaus, father of Siawush. Kaikhushrav was a great king in the Iranian history. He spread justice all over the world. He ruled 60 years. Kaikushrav handed over the kingdom to Laurasp and went to the mountain with the knights and disappeared. Laurasp Laurasp reigned for 120 years. After that, he went to Balkh to worship God. Istasp also reigned over his kingdom for 120 years. Zardusht came and told about his new faith. When the good king heard him talk about the religious faith, he adopted the faith as well as its principles. After some years, Gushtasp handed over the throne to Bahman, son of Aspandiar. The sons of Gustasp, that is Vistasp, spread the religion of Zarthustra far and wide in the Iranian lands, fought the holy wars in East and West Iran against the enemies of the new religion.
the median dynasty devsis founded the median dynasty about the 7th century bc iran was ruled over by assyrians devsis was a great personage in media and he was known for his wisdom integrity and justice he overthrew the assyrian rule and founded an independent kingdom of media about 608 bc he built his capital at ekbatana a famous fortified city in iran he was succeeded by his son freotes freotes became the king of media he ruled for 20 years he was succeeded by siagzerus siagzerus ruled for 35 years and after his death he was succeeded by astyages astyages was the last of the median kings he ruled for a long time Cyrus overthrew the Median sovereignty. He established the first Parsi empire of the Achaemenian. Achaemenian dynasty. The first Parsi empire is called the Achaemenian empire. It was founded by Cyrus II. the great about 559 bc achaemenes was the first king of the dynasty after him his son thyspes occupied the throne two sons of thyspes namely cyrus i and ariaramnes founded two lines of kingship cyrus i was succeeded by his son cambyses i cambyses i was born an illustrious son who was destined to be the founder of the Achaemenian empire and the first Parsi emperor he was Cyrus II the great Cyrus II the great 559 to 529 BC founder of the Achaemenian empire Cyrus was born in 599 BC after his father he came to the throne of Anshan a small kingdom under overlordship of the median emperor as the ages about 559 bc in the babylonian record cyrus is called the great king of anshan persu bael akkad and sumer he united and brought under one rule the iranian people of pars media and other provinces of iran and thus founded the first parsi empire Cyrus built the capital city which was known as Pasar Gade this was the principal city and generally the emperors were crowned in the royal palace at Pasar Gade thereafter the greek kingdoms of asia minor namely phrygia mysia and bithynia came under suzerainty of cyrus thus the parsi empire of cyrus stretched up to the mediterranean sea His empire at that time extended from Susiana in the west of Arachosia, Bactria and Sogdiana in the east and from the Mount Ararat in Armenia in the north to the Persian Gulf in the south. The great Babylonian king Nebuchadrezzar 604 to 562 BC had conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the city demolished the famous temple of solomon and kept the jews in captivity in babylonia nabuchodonosor was the last babylonian king when cyrus marched into babylonia the people opposed nabuchodonosor opened the city gates and received cyrus as their deliverer accordingly cyrus delivered the jews from the captivity in babylon and allowed them to return to their country and helped them to rebuild the famous temple of king solomon which was destroyed by nebuchadrezzar for this act of magnanimity cyrus is remembered in honorable term in the old testament the scripture of the zoo while engaged in the battle cyrus was wounded and he died at the age of 71 in 529 bc the ashuri dakma of Cyrus was situated at Pasargade. Cambyses 
529 to 521 BC. Cyrus was succeeded by this son Cambyses. He ruled 80 or 90 years. Cambyses received the title Pharaoh. He and his descendants constituted the 27th dynasty of the Pharaohs for the period of about 124 years. Darius the Great, 521 to 486 BC. I, Darius the Great King, the King of Kings, a Parsi, the son of the Parsi, an Aryan of Aryan family. After Cambyses, there was no direct descendant of Cyrus. Darius the Great, a member of the younger line of the royal family, bravely and courageously, wisely and skillfully answered the call of duty. The army of Darius landed in Marathon, but the attempt proved a disaster for his army. This battle of Marathon is regarded as one of the 15 decisive battles of the world. Administration of the Empire Darius was a brave warrior, a benevolent monarch, and also a wise and skillful administrator. The empire was divided into administrative districts of the satrapies. He mentions 29 satrapies including Ethiopia, India, Sindh and Punjab, Ionia, etc. Each satrapy was governed by a satrap, a protector of the state, a viceroy, a governor appointed by the emperor. Darius built royal palaces at Persepolis and that city was the administrative center. Means of communication He built roads, threw bridges to cross the rivers and dug canals for providing waterways. The famous royal road, the highway connecting Susa and Sardis was about 2,500 kilometers. Postal service Darius introduced postal service which may be regarded as the first postal system in the world. A dispatch from Susa reached its destination at Sardis, a distance of about 2,500 kilometers in five or six days. Darius the Great was a statesman, warrior, economist, scientist, educator, the benefactor of his people and the ardent protector of their religion. Darius the Great passed away at the age of 65 in 486 BC, one of the Oshuris or dogmas, generally known as the tombs at Nakahi Rustam, bear the inscription of Darius and it is identified as the Oshuri of Darius the Great. Xerxes I, 486 to 465 BC. After Darius the Great, his son Xerxes ascended the throne and inherited the celebrated, well organized, and vastly extended empire of the Archimanians. Xerxes was chosen by Darius to be the successor to the throne. Xerxes was murdered while he was asleep in his royal apartment in 465 BC. The emperors after Xerxes, after Xerxes I, the following emperors ruled Artaxerxes I. 465 to 424 BC, Xerxes II, 424 BC, Sogdines, 424 BC, Darius II, 424 to 404 BC, Artaxerxes II, 405 to 358 BC. After Darius II, his son Arsaces ascended the throne as Artaxerxes II. He was reputed to have Wonderful memory, he acted as a peacemaker and strengthened the empire. Artaxerxes II was kind, generous and a wise ruler. He ruled for a long period of 46 years and passed away peacefully at the ripe old age of 94 years in 358 BC. Artaxerxes III, 359 BC to 338 BC, beginning of the end of the glorious empire. Out of the three sons of Artaxerxes II, the third, Orcus, ascended the throne as Artaxerxes III. Artaxerxes was poisoned by his courtier Bagaus. The king's youngest son, Arius occupied the throne 
in 338 BC, but Bagaus put him and his children to death, and Darius III ascended the throne. Darius III, 336 to 331 BC, the end of the Achaemenian Empire. Darius III was a brave, generous, and good ruler. It is believed that the march of Alexander into Iran was facilitated by some satras who believed Alexander to be the rightful heir to the throne. Darius III ascended the throne in the year in which Alexander became king of Macedonia. But King Philip was murdered at Agae in 336 BC and his son Alexander ascended the throne when he was 20 years of age. Alexander refused to pay tribute to the Parsi king. He raised an army and marched from Pella. Alexander inflicted heavy losses and defeated the Persian army. Then he overran the coastal countries of Asia Minor, conquering all cities and states. Darius offered resistance to Alexander two times. Darius III was mobilizing another army for defense of the country. Alexander returned to Asia, crossed Euphrates, met the army of Darius, which was awaiting him at Gorgamela. This was the famous battle of Arabella, in which Darius was once again defeated by Alexander in 331 BC. Persepolis, the capital and center of the empire, fell. Alexander looted the royal palaces, secured enormous wealth, and burned the palaces of Darius, Xerxes, and Arthaxerxes. When Alexander was about to capture Darius, the latter was killed by Bessus, the satrap of Bactria, and he passed away just as Alexander reached the chariot in which he was murdered and was left dying in 330 BC. The world knows Alexander as Alexander the Great, but to Zoroastrians, he is Alexander the Accursed. He shares with the devil Ahriman alone. His soldiers plundered temples and sanctuaries, destroyed religious texts, and massacred the priests. At the end of his four-month stay in the magnificent royal city of Persepolis, built by Darius the Great, he burned the city to the ground. In a drunken orgy, he threw the first torch himself, then had second thoughts, but it was too late. Such was the tragic end of great illustrious Parsi Empire of the Archimanians founded by wise and benevolent father of the Parsi nation, Cyrus the Great. The Parsi Achaemenian emperors ruled for about 230 years. Alexander proclaimed himself the emperor of Persia. The Macedonian dynasty or the Seleucid dynasty. The empire of Alexander was very quickly built up, but it broke up more quickly than it was built up. Immediately after the death of Alexander, there was a scramble for power and possession among the Dauchi, the successor of Alexander. Seleucus Nicator, a trusted general of Alexander, founded the Seleucid dynasty and the Seleucid era 312 BC. Seleucus managed to extend his empire up to the Oxus and Indus. Thus, the countries of former Achaemenian Empire was now ruled by Seleucid generals. The Macedonian rule in Iran lasted for about 80 years and it was destroyed by Parthians about 250 BC. Parthian Dynasty The Parthians were a martial race. They were heroic and skillful, warriors, experienced riders, and expert hunters. After 80 years of Macedonian rule of the Seleucids, a new Iranian kingdom came into existence. The kingdom was founded by one named Arsasis or Arshak, a resident of the province of Parthia in northeastern Iran, and later it grew into an empire. The Arshkanians ruled from about 250 BC to 226 AC for about 476 years. The term Parthian means resident of the country of Parthia. Arasis or Arshak Arsasis was proclaimed king of the Parthians in 248 BC, but he did not rule for long as he was killed in a battle. He was succeeded by his brother Tiridates as Arsasis' second, 
in 247 BC. Mithradates I ascended the throne as Arsasis IV in 174 BC. He extended his sovereignty from the Euphrates to the Indus, and he thus founded Parthian Empire. Phratis II, 138 to 128 BC, loses his life fighting nomads. Mithridates II, the Great, 123 to 87 BC, retakes Babylonia, captures Sistan, and establishes his sovereignty over the steppes of the Caspian. Vologasis I, or Valaksh, 51 to 78 CE, ordered the collection and careful preservation of all the Zoroastrian scriptures scattered after the ravages of Alexander. The last Parthian rulers were Vologasis IV, 191 to 207 CE, Vologasis V, 207 to 227, and Artabanus V, or Ardaban, from 213 to 224. The 500 years of the Parthians witnessed long drawn out battles with the Romans. The Sasanian dynasty, 226 to 641 AC. Arthakshar Papakan, 226 to 241. The Parsi Empire of the House of Sasan generally known as the Tathanian Empire, was founded by Artikshar Papakan. Artikshar's father, Papak, was a descendant of the ancient royal family. Artikshar was a benevolent and wise king, a valiant warrior, a skillful organizer, and an efficient administrator. Artikshar passed away about 241 AD. Shapur I, 241 to 271 A.D. Shapur I, the son of Artekshar, ascended the throne. During his reign, Shapur was mainly engaged in the wars with the Romans. Shapur reigned for 30 years and passed away in 271 A.D. Emperors after Shapur I The following emperors ruled over Iran after Shapur I. Hormuzd I, 271 to 272 A.D. Behram 1, 272 to 270.